Welcome back. Well, it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon here in the beginning part of April. Good excuse to open up the windows and get some air in the house. It's also a good excuse to do some cleaning up and uh, reorganizing. And actually, we're going to be putting together this rolling tool cabinet. Now, this is one of those free offerings that I used to get from Uline. In fact, this is actually the last free offering that I got from Uline uh, since I'm no longer at the company that I got these from. Uh, however, this has been riding around the back of my van for quite some time and I just really didn't get a chance to put it together. I didn't have a need for it at first. It was something I thought I would like and maybe use down the road, but I've actually come up with the use for it. Now, this is something that you would normally use for, let's say, working on a vehicle where you could wheel out and, uh, you know, you're working on the tire. Let's say you can wheel around to the tire and you can keep various tools in it. You can see it has a padded seat up on top of it. Then there's also a tool tray and these other little pieces that fold down from the side. And while I have everything kind of laid out, the only thing I had to provide was a 14 millimeter wrench and a Phillips screwdriver. They gave you an Allen wrench, which you can see sitting right there with the rest of the pieces. And we'll go online and get the pricing and you know whatnot, but I will show, I do have the manual for this. So we will be assembling this and doing a little mini review of it. And then I'm gonna show you what I anticipate on using this for. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the camera just a little bit closer here. Now, once you verify that you do have all the pieces, which there is this little diagram right here, uh, we will have them all laid out just to make assembly a little easier. They actually had those little acorn nuts sitting on the ends of the bolts and these little guys over here, which, is, which the uh, casters assemble onto those were, were attached to the caster. So I just re, uh, undid everything here and just put it all out on the table just to make it easier. Just some quick specs for this. The capacity is 350 pounds uh, total. Now you can put uh, 11 pounds on each of these side trays. You can see one of them featured here. And you can put up to 22 pounds of tools per drawer. Now uh, I don't really intend on using this outside. Both my wife and I have brand new vehicles. There really isn't any need to work on them right now. Um, in the past, I did plenty of work on my other vehicles, so this would have been useful then. I do have a flat driveway, so this could be useful. Um, but to pick it up and lug it back and forth to the shed and everything might be more of a pain in the neck. But what I do plan on using it for is in the house here. I can roll it underneath my desk. I could use it as a footrest if I want. I could use it as an additional seat in here if I need to. And it's just going to help organize things. I already have uh, everything pretty well organized already, but I have a drawer. It's uh, got one of those drawer organizers in it, and I keep additional tools and stuff in it. It's just a little cluttered sometimes, so we're going to use this to store those additional tools. So the first thing we're going to do is actually assemble the casters onto the actual trays. And looking at these trays, you can see that it's hinged. There's these square holes. We're going to take the little nut here and put it through the hole. And on the other side here, we're gonna take the caster and put it through. Now, the reason why this is squared is because the end of that caster there has a little square fitting that fits into there and holds it captive. So when we tighten this nut down the other side, which is a hex headed nut, it'll tighten up against the caster and hold it into place. I'm gonna do that now for both of these trays. Okay, those are put together. And as you can see, this is just on a hinge surface. So these are gonna flip up. And obviously this is the top of the bar, this is the bottom. The next thing to do is to actually attach this to the toolbox. So you'll see that there's a couple holes right over here on both sides. They also gave you these support rods. And uh, I'll, I'll mention that there's two sizes of bolt here. There's a 35 millimeter and a 40 millimeter. The longer one's the 40, the shorter one's the 35. Also worth mentioning is these bolts have a little washer on it. You're gonna wanna remove all these washers because this is gonna go on the nut side of things. And they did mention that you need a 14 millimeter wrench, but I've come to find that the little acorn nuts are 13 millimeters, so you do need an additional wrench. And since I had to go out in the car anyway, I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna grab a 14 millimeter socket. This will make things go a lot easier. Uh, so what I'm gonna actually do is, is I'm gonna flip this upside down. It'll make it a lot easier to attach these casters to. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So obviously this is the bottom side of the cabinet. And if you take a look, there's those four holes there. There's also four holes here on these support pieces. So this is gonna sit in here like this. The support rods are going to actually go underneath the box to kind of hold the box in place as well, just to give it some extra stability. And we're gonna take the shorter ones, that's the 35 millimeter bolt, 
and this is going to go directly on the outside edge like this and you do have a few holes to line this up through and then we're going to take the 40 millimeter one and that's going to go on the inside here like this and again once you line up all the holes and if you take a look they did this because this caster needs to clear if you do it the wrong way around, if you put this here and you put the longer bolts in the wrong position, this won't swivel 360. So that's very important. Now you're gonna wanna take your washer and you wanna take your nut. And on the other side of this, we'll need to flip this up out of the way. And it's kind of blind now at this point, but we're gonna put this washer in first to put the nut in behind. Uh, I'll hold it with the 13 millimeter wrench and I'll use the 14 millimeter sock on top to attach this. So I'm gonna do this on all eight bolts all around. All right, that's all set. You might wanna go around and spin all the casters just to make sure everything clears. Um, as long as you put the right bolts in the right spots, everything should be fine. There is a little snap right here and a little strap. And this is designed to keep this tray in the upright position when you're not actually using it. So I went ahead and snapped the other one already and obviously just did this one. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and that'll prevent that from falling over. Uh, I will mention while I have this upside down, we can take a little look at the construction of this. So if I flip this around, obviously the drawers are upside down, but if we take a look at this, you could see that this is actually a metal frame that's attached to the seat and the toolbox itself is attached to the frame as well, um, but only at the top, not the bottom. So these little straps we put in, it just helps to hold these outside pieces together and also it just helps just to give it a little bit extra support, although not much on the bottom of this toolbox. Now I had thought from looking at this that perhaps um, I could actually adapt this to be used as a tabletop toolbox. And how I thought about that was, is there's some screws here you can see there's one here, there's one on the opposite side just off camera. If you took these four screws off, this seat comes off, which will allow access to the screws that hold the toolbox to the frame, which are just, just a little bit in here. Uh, you can't really get that on camera too well, but the top of the screw would be accessed without the seat in position. And then that would just leave you with these two C-shaped frames, basically. And the front frame and the back frame are not attached to each other at all. Um, it does seem pretty uh, stable though now that I have everything put together but you could see before these support pieces were put in they kind of like they wanted to work out a little bit um, so it, it does seem pretty secure so far but you could obviously adapt this for other things if you so desire to so let's just get this thing flipped over there's one last thing to assemble onto it and that would be this tool tray now there are two different ways you can orient it it's actually a tray that goes in this position not in this position and the only thing that are left are two Phillips screws. You can see there's threaded inserts here. And this is just gonna attach in the back just like that. And that's that done. So this is nice because you can just take like a screwdriver like that and stick it in it. And I have some of these T-squares, which should fit in this slot like that. And that's actually what I'm anticipating using this for. Now, I do have uh, one that's a little longer than this, which is this one here. And more or less, I'm hoping these are gonna live in this thing just to keep them off my desk. Now it does sit just a little bit taller, as you can see, but we might be able to just adjust this a little bit. I don't have to worry about any uh, you know, rough surfaces that this thing's rolling on here in the house, and I'm probably not gonna use it as a seat anyway. But uh, I tend to use these when I prototype things just to make life a little easier. And I don't really have a good place to store it without it getting messed up. You could see the rusted out one used to live in my shed. And this one I just picked up recently when I did the uh, LED cube set. Because I needed a clean surface to uh, mark a template for, for making uh, an actual jig. But this is actually pretty good so far. I like it. Um, of course, you know, if, if, you're, if you're using this for this situation, you're going to want to make sure this nut is tightened up. So this thing doesn't actually go banging onto your desk. But... Anyway, that's one of the things I was planning on using this for. Uh, if we roll around to the side over here, we can see there's that little strap I mentioned, and this folds down. This is a magnetic surface. Um, I have a wrench here, let's see. Yeah, it's, it's good enough where that holds. You can see I'm flipping it up, it's not moving, so there's definitely enough uh, magnetism here and to hold that in place. So that'll be useful for putting nuts and stuff like that if I'm working on things. Um, it is small enough where we could keep this on the desk, or I could pick it up and put it on the desk if I need it, but it's probably, like I mentioned earlier, going to live on the floor underneath this desk. Uh, opening up the drawers shows that they do have these nice mats in it. I like that it came with that. That's very handy. 
It's not the biggest draw. Um, there's only so much you're gonna put in this, but certainly enough room for the little electronics things I do here. You know, if I wanna put in like my wire strippers and stuff like that, you can see, you get an idea for scaling here, how big that really is. Uh, one thing that's nice is it's it's got some nice slide to it. There doesn't seem like there's any ball bearings on here, as you can probably see or hear. But what's nice is when it gets to a certain point, it clicks in and it's hard to pull out. You actually have to hold this. You're not gonna you're not gonna really pull it. I mean, if you slam that in here, it seems like it's kind of hard to pull this open unless you really pull it and hold it. Uh, all the drawers are the same size, and as mentioned, they all do have those pads inside. Um, the seat, it's got pretty nice cushioning on it. It does have the U-Line logo right here, um, but that's really the only marking on it that shows that. So all in all, a nice little uh, tool chest. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the floor. We'll see what kind of clearance we get under the desk. And that's pretty good. Um, plenty of room down there. I can definitely orient that in any way, slide it way back behind the desk and not have it be an issue. I'll just show you my little uh, seat that I use here at the desk. It's just a couple inches lower than that. Um, I, of course, this is one of those adjustable height seats, and it's about midway up and down from the range it can go. Um, I will say I've sat on that. It's a pretty good cushion, not too uncomfortable. In fact, it's pretty much just as comfortable as the seat sitting next to it. Um, not really much more to add to this particular video, so we're just going to pop online real quick and see either how much money it costs to buy one of these from Uline or how much money you have to spend with them to get one of these for free. And on Uline's website, you can see this comes in two colors, either black or red. Uh, I love how they do these pictures, by the way. But anyway, we'll select the red one and we'll see that that actually came to $75, which isn't horrible. And you can actually get this free with a $1,000 purchase. So if you're in warehousing or you place frequent Uline orders and you'd like one of these, I would recommend picking one up because it seems like it's a pretty decent item. Um, it is a 30-pound total weight item, so in case you were wondering about that. And if you do want to see the instructions, I can show you just a quick blown-up version of that. And uh, feel free to pause this as necessary. But there's just this uh, two pages. It's really very simple to do, as you can see from this video. They don't. They mentioned that you should not lubricate the casters, and you should constantly check to make sure they're tight. Uh, I, as long as this is sitting on the floor here in this room and not riding over rough surfaces, I don't think they'll be vibrated loose. So I don't think it'll be a big issue. And if you speak Spanish, there is Spanish instructions here as well. Pretty easy. There's also looks like French. So it's nice that you, and, and the book has all these as well. But there's also a troubleshooting page, and this just mentions if you have problems putting this together, like the holes don't line up, you can just apply a little bit of pressure to kind of get everything fitted together as you start to put the bolts in. Uh, that wasn't the case with mine. It went together pretty easily. There was a spot where you just had to jiggle the bolt through to align all the holes up. Other than that, pretty easy. And here's obviously the same thing in all three of those other languages. Feel free to pause this as necessary. And that's really all there is to it. So if you are interested in this, like I said, pick one up. It's a pretty decent item. Uh, if you can get one for free, that's even better. And with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to click the bell icon. And that allows notifications on this channel. And we'll see you guys next video.